this workshop's about Hyperlane. Uh, title is Hooked, Building with Hyperlane V3. I'm Daniel, I'm a software engineer. Hyperlane's main features is really twofold. So the first one is modular security uh, of sending messages cross-chain. And the second one is permissionless interoperability. So really anyone can take Hyperlane and deploy it between any chains, two or more, without asking us for permission or without having us run their infrastructure. Um, to give you an overview of Hyperlane, you, have, you want to send a message between two contracts that live on different chains. So you have chain A and chain B. The way you do that is from the sending contract, you call this mailbox contract that lives on the origin chain. And you send a message to it. There is an off-chain agent called a relayer that periodically scans the mailbox on the origin chain. Uh, and when it finds new messages, it will look for their destination chain and deliver them to the mailbox on the destination chain. Once arrived there, um, every message can have a different security configuration based on who the receiver is. So the message has to pass through this interchain security module logic. This logic can, for instance, be a multi-sig, like have enough signers sign this message for it to be considered valid. And if it is considered valid, it passes the intergen security module verification, then the message is forwarded to the receiving contract. Currently, the status quo of interoperability is that if you integrate with a bridging provider, so with their messaging interface, you are tied to whichever security module they choose to use. So later on, if your security matures, or like if there's new products on the market that improve interchain security, you're not going to be able to just upgrade the security of your bridge without breaking the interface of your contracts and having to release a new protocol version. So the first innovation that Hyperlane brought about is to decouple security modules from the messaging interface. So you, all you have to do is just integrate with a Hyperlane contract and your message can have its security module decided dynamically based on who the recipient is, the content of the message, and so on. The way this works is that once the relayer calls process on the destination mailbox, the mailbox will then query the recipient for the interchain security module it wants to use. It will then feed the message into the interchain security module, and if it turns out it passes security verification, the message is forwarded to the recipient. This allows you to do some really powerful um, semantic routing, um, which is, for instance, if the message is low value, you might be happy with you know, a quicker and cheaper form of bridge security, uh, like a multisig, maybe like a two out of two multisig or so. But if the message is very high value, you might want to be more precautious, go through a more expensive security module, such as maybe an optimistic one where you have to wait seven days, or maybe a stricter multisig, and so on. Uh, that was Hyperlane V2. We've very recently received, uh, released Hyperlane V3, which introduces hooks, uh, which we believe is like the ultimate form uh, of interoperability UX. Uh, they allow you to pass messages cross-chain, not only via Hyperlane, but also via any bridge provider out there, be it native roll-up bridges or external interoperability protocols. Um, you just select the hook you want to use when a message is dispatched and the message is routed through that external bridge provider or rollup or hyperlane security module. A hook is comprised of two contracts, one that lives on the origin chain and another one that lives on the destination chain. So in this diagram, here you can see the hook and the hook ISM. These essentially abstract over the interactions of the external bridge provider. Um, so you have the sender that calls the mailbox, and when you call the mailbox, you can specify the hook you want your message to use to be routed via. Um, and then, you know, the mailbox will see the hook address and will call it with the message. It's able to call this hook because it implements the iPost dispatch hook. The hook will then call into the external bridge provider smart contract. You'll have the infrastructure of that bridge provider pass your message to the destination chain, and ultimately, the message will reach this hook ISM, which is 
the destination of the message when it's passed through the external provider. Then the final step is for the relayer to call the mailbox with the ID of that message. Mailbox will call the hook ISM to verify whether that message ID was received. And then it's forward to the recipient if it was indeed received. To give you an example of a hook we already implemented, it's the OP stack hook. The diagram looks exactly the same. Um, and what it does is we have this OP stack hook on the origin chain that abstracts away over interactions with the L1 cross domain messenger you know, of the OP stack and then the OP stack ISM which acts as a receiver from the L2 cross domain messenger. Say you wanted to use a new bridge provider that's not currently supported by Hyperlane. You can do that yourself. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. With the Chainlink CCIP example, you just need to abstract away over sending a message and receiving a message. And then the entire Hyperlane infrastructure will manage uh, delivery for you. What this allows you to do, and I think is really cool, is it allows you to aggregate several bridge providers or security modules that you configure via Hyperlane. So for instance, you can say, only deliver my message once both provider A and B bridged it. Um, this greatly re improves resilience because if provider A is hacked, um, the message won't get delivered because you need both of them to deliver your message. Or you may want just uh, to have a provider A and a multisig that uh, maybe mainly your team controls, the bridge is still not um, centralized because you rely on both of them. But like if provider A is hacked, then your entire bridge isn't hacked. One implementation detail, if you do decide to implement a hook of your own, is that the mailbox makes two calls to the hook contract. One is to quote, uh, is this quote dispatch call that reads the fees that the sender needs to pay. Uh, so your hook has to call into the sending contract of the bridge provider, read the estimate fee, return it to the mailbox so it can charge it from the user, and then the mailbox will call post-dispatch, which is this interface call, uh, with which the hook will then call into the, in this example, CCIP send smart contract. Uh, one of the main bounties we have in this hackathon is to build on hooks. Uh, so my question to you is, what will you hook? That was the first part of the workshop, modular security. Now the second part is permissionless interoperability. So the ability to deploy, deploy Hyperlane everywhere. Um, we'll cover permissionlessly deploying Hyperlane with our new CLI, spawning off-chain agent infrastructure with essentially one click with Kurtosis Cloud. Uh, shout out to the Kurtosis team here. They work really hard to make this happen. And then sending a cross-chain message. And you can have this entire infrastructure spun up in less than 10 minutes. Um, because internet tends to be unreliable, I already have a recording of this entire flow, so I'll just walk you through it. We have docs in place, uh, but I'll just explain the, let's see, the flow to you. So the first command we're using is called hyperlane config create chain. Say you've just run a new Rollup, like it's a rollup you own and you want to have it supported by the Hyperlane network. The first command you'd run is Hyperlane config create chain to create artifacts for this rollup or new chain that you want to support using Hyperlane. And these are really the details you'd use to fill in um, in MetaMask. So it's a name, a chain ID, and domain ID, which usually match. The protocol type in this example is Ethereum because we're bridging to ancient date. Uh, Hyperlink currently supports Ethereum, Solana, and Cosmosm. And the provider RPC is, again, what you'd be pasting into MetaMask. So this outputs one artifact for you called chains.yaml. Uh, now, say we want to use a security module. Just for the basis of this demo, let's use a one out of one multisig. And the command you run for that is hyperlane config create multisig. Uh, it asks you, okay, which chain do you want to create this multisig for? We're going to say ancient date test, the one we just created. Uh, so the CLI reads from the artifacts you just created. The most basic form is message ID multisig. Threshold will be one in this case because we're going to run a single validator of chain agent which signs uh, messages. And we're just pasting the account here and now we have another artifact. With these two artifacts, we can now deploy Hyperlane. So the command is Hyperlane deploy core. 
I'm just passing a private key in the environment to be able to pay for gas. <clears throat> We're going to be prompted for a few details, like which chains do you want to deploy hyperlink between? Uh, we're going to deploy between ancient a test and Gurley in this example. So I'm going to select this and that. And then let's see if there's any other questions. Existing contract addresses relates to existing artifacts, but we don't have those, so we're just going to say no. And select the security ISM you want to use, which is the multi-sig we just set up. Is this deployment correct? Yes. And now, you know, a whole range of contract deployments uh, starts. It takes about maybe five minutes on uh, hotel Wi-Fi, which happened this morning. So I'm just going to skip over this. There's quite a few deployed contracts. So, you know, between uh, Gorli and Ancient Eight. Once this succeeds, you get two more uh, artifacts. One is for the core deployment, that's the address of the contracts that were just deployed. And another one is the agent config to spin up your relayer and validator. The relayer is used again to pass messages between chains and the validator is used to sign messages as part of the multi-sig. Uh, with these two pieces, the artifacts, we can now use a kurtosis agent uh, command as part of the hyperlane CLI. So that's hyperlane deploy kurtosis agents with a few, you know, command line arguments, like origin chain is ancient date test uh, for the validator. We're passing the path to the artifacts we just got from the deployment. And the relay chains field here relates to the chains the relayer basically connects. I think my first attempt here was unsuccessful because I passed the wrong path. Let me fast forward. Boom, and basically this CLI command outputs a URL I'm going to take this URL, copy paste it in my browser, and with one click, I'll be able to deploy the relayer and validator in the cloud without me having to do any sort of uh, complicated setup. The only thing I need to add is the private key for the validator and relayer. So I get a pre-filled in uh, form with all the details for the deployment. I'm just going to copy paste the private key that I used when I signed up the validator earlier in the security module step. I just click run and a lot of magic happens in the background. Um, so like some Docker images are pulled in, I guess some you know, cloud instances are created. Uh, and now I have this environment called you know, random name Murky Meadow, a validator and the relayer. If you click on the relayer, you can see its command line logs. Uh, it's currently scanning for events uh, on both mailboxes, on both chains. And the validator as well is scanning for messages on uh, ancient date to sign, potentially. So the last step of all of this is when we now have a live hyperlane bridge between Gorli and ancient date, right? So now we can use another command, hyperlane send message, to send the message between Gurley and Ancient Eight uh, with the new bridge infrastructure we've just spun up. Uh, again, I'm passing a private key in the environment to pay for gas. <clears throat> and I just do hyperlane send message from origin Gurley to destination Ancient Eight test. And I need to pass uh, the artifacts from my prior deployment on Ancient Eight. Let's do that. And now the, the message is dispatched. We're just waiting for inclusion in the blockchain. We're going to get a message ID, which the relayer will be scanning for. Let's fast forward a bit. That's the message ID right there. This is me just looking through the logs. In the end, I decide, let me just control F this message ID in the logs. I wait for a bit, and then I find a log from the relayer saying, okay, found this message uh, on Gurley. I'm going to dispatch it to the destination you just told me to. Uh, this is the message ID that I'm sending. And then within a few seconds, if I go back to my CLI, I'm going to be able to see that the message was successfully delivered from Gurley to Ancient 8 with, you know, a deployment I just created in less than 10 minutes, really. Um, yeah, so that's my uh, workshop. Let's see. As to bounties for this hackathon, we have four bounties. 
I invite you all to check them out um, on the Youth Global website. Um, yeah, and happy to take any questions after this. Thanks so much. Woo. <laughs>